Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my studio. Today we're going to do uh, watercolor paintings with Everett. Uh, I'm broadcasting live from uh, Chesapeake, Virginia. I'm in the video, I'm in the studio today with my wife, Gloria. Hello. And uh, I'm broadcasting on uh, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and uh, YouTube. So if you've got, uh, and I've also got the uh, chat room on live. So if you have any comments during the broadcast, uh, give me a comment, uh, give me a question, and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Gloria's in the studio. She'll be uh, monitoring the broadcast and also the chat room. Uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm going to do a landscape landscape scene, but I'm going to focus on uh, doing a nice, interesting uh, shadow patterns. Uh, shadow, shadow sometimes may be a challenge uh, uh, for, for artists, and uh, I'm always working on shadows. It's something I've, I've got... Uh, a long time practicing and also learning and every time I see a shadow pattern or something I, I try to look at that and see what I can learn from that so today we're gonna do a little painting and I'm gonna we're gonna talk about shadows so let's go over to my uh, my main uh, overhead camera okay well there's a, there's a picture of the uh, this is what I saw last weekend this is a photograph I took in the morning I did a plain air little plain air sketch out there but you can see here uh, this little area a nice shadow pattern coming across there and a, the sun sign was coming through here a uh, beautiful shadow pattern and uh, interesting little interesting little setup here and uh, so this little bench here with a table which I paint sometimes I'll paint there sometimes I'll sketch whatever uh, it gives me a nice location of the, of the little waterway scene over here uh, and I did a here's a real close-up of the uh, of the tail. I did it. I took a picture of this later, but the shot the sun was not out that day. And you can see that's a very, very dull background and, and not very much colors there. But I wanted to get a, a, a good close up of the uh, of the bench scene here, the little table scene, just to give me some little ideas of detail. Uh, but this is this is the photograph I'm going to use for my color scheme. Uh, I'm going to use the colors from this, this uh, photograph here, and also what I when I did my plain air sketch. I also painted the colors that I wanted to use in today's painting. Okay, I've transferred the uh, I've transferred the uh, design over to my uh, sketchbook, and you can see here I've got the table, and basically uh, I've uh, expanded a close up close up view. But that's going to be the design drawing for my painting today. Okay, and that'll be on my uh, website. EverestWaterCollars.com. Let me take you over to EverestWaterCollars.com. Uh, there's a QR code for EverestWaterCollars.com. You can go there and uh, take a look at my videos on online. It's uh, Everest uh, Studio. You'll find uh, uh, my live broadcast on my website. You'll see that on there. And also, on the, I'm going to put another QR code. The one that QR code on the right of the screen. That's the one to my Facebook page. And there, if you want to paint along and do the same painting I'm doing today, uh, and you want to share that, you can do it with my Facebook page, which is uh, Everest Watercolors Art Group. And uh, this that QR code will take you right there to that particular page on Facebook. Let me click those two off. Okay. Uh, so, and also, uh, let me put my drawing aside. Let's, uh, what I want to do is talk a little bit about my painting scheme today. You can see here, uh, from the photograph, the, the main colors I see is uh, orange, and I see a little bit of uh, blue in the background here of the, of the water. So I decided to make my my painting scheme uh, blue and orange. And so you can see here the blue at the top of the color wheel, blue, and the opposite color is orange. So this is going to be a, uh, a complementary painting of two complementary colors, the blue and the orange. Okay, and I'll probably put a little bit of green in there here and there for the bushes and so forth. But that's the main, the main, uh, came, uh, main painting plan I'm going to have. A little complementary uh, color scheme. So in my, uh, in my palette, uh, you can see all uh, my artist watercolors here uh, on Everest Watercolors, also Everest Watercolor page. Uh, this is uh, Holbein's watercolor, uh, artist watercolors here that I use on my palette. I'll be using those today. And uh, I'll be using uh, Holbein uh, watercolor paintbrushes. Uh, this is a number eight round. This is all synthetic. Uh, here's a half inch, half inch flat. Nice little brush. You'll see me using those today. And I've got a three quarter inch flat synthetic, and I've also got a one inch, one inch flat. 
These are all synthetic brushes. These are uh, uh, whole buying uh, brushes, but they're also on my web website. Under, in my supply page, you can see the brushes and so forth. And the paints that I'm going to be using today are also on my supply page. So let me set this aside for a second, get the brushes out I'm going to use. Uh, uh, I'm going to start out with, uh, like I said, I'm going to start out with a blue color. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of uh, ultramarine, uh, ultramarine blue. A little bit of cerulean blue. Get a little bit of blue color here. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start painting... Uh, I'm going to start painting the, the, the table and the table I'm going to start I'm going to make the table blue you saw the color of the table is kind of gray and uh, grayish uh, color so I'm going to I'm going to liven up a little bit put some uh, put some live colors I'm going to paint the, I'm going to paint uh, use the color blue here basically as my my painting scheme and I'll pick up a little bit of a little bit of cerulean here also a little bit of cerulean ultramarine blue here just to get some a basic color here on my on this uh, table this tabletop and this will also give uh, a lot of less nice color to the painting uh, I think a complimentary uh, painting plan makes it very interesting it gives a little more it gives not only color contrast but also gives you a value contrast uh, I can make the paint make the blue a lot darker and uh, the orange orange colors can be a lot lighter so I have a, a value contrast and I can also have a, a color contrast so the, the, lar the largest contrast you can have in your painting is a complementary color so I'm going to be using uh, the blue and the orange as my now I'll change brushes here I want to get the little smaller brush here on the side uh, on this area here uh, Edge of, the, edge, of the, edge of the table. I'm using a little bit of uh, cerulean blue at this, at this stage right here. A little cerulean, cerulean blue on the, on the number eight round brush. Okay, also while I'm here, uh, I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow on my, on my, just a little bit of yellow, and I'm going to put a little, uh, there was a little bit of green up here, on, so I'm going to put a little color into that blue, just to give a little, another, another little, change and also while I'm here uh, I'm going to lift a little bit of color off uh, this this paint's still a little bit damp so I can lift it off make it a little bit lighter here in the in the center and uh, you'll see I'm, I've got a, I've got a shadow pattern coming across the top here so I'm going to make this a little bit lighter here and also here on the edge on the edge of the, of the edge of the table, so I'm I'm, make, I'm trying to prepare that ahead of time. Okay, all right. Well, that's just enough uh, playing around with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and put some more, some more colors. So there's a a little seat down here. I'm going to make that the same color. I'm use blue down here on this side. So I'm taking my time here. This is the impact area, the uh, the blue the blue table. So that's going to be my uh, area of interest. Uh, I can pick any area of interest I want to, but I decide to make the, the table to be my my focal point. And you'll see why when we finish with the painting here. Uh, it's going to have the uh, the brightest color. Contrast wise. Now I'll go back to that smaller brush to get the edge of the table here uh, again on the edge of the bench uh, using a little bit of cerulean blue get the edge of the of the bench down here so I'm using this small brush for a small area and I'm going to pick up a little bit of a uh, pick up a little bit of color here off the top of this right here make it a little bit lighter on the corner here Planning ahead for that shadow pattern. Now the uh, I'm going to use a bigger brush now. I'm going to go to the three quarter brush. I'm going to go to the three quarter brush, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of a kind of a mixture. I'm going to start out with a little bit of blue over here. 
on the, this will be more than less the shadow pattern area, shadow area, a little bit of blue. Now I'm going to pick up a little, uh, just a little bit of, uh, a little more color. I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna now. So I'm making a little more color here on this, a little more color on the, uh, Well, I don't call these legs. This is a table. These are not leg, but the more the support of the table. I'm gonna make a little bit of little change, little color change here from blue, and put a little bit of burnt sienna in there, just to give a color change. Uh, Makes it a little more colorful down here than just all blue. A uh, part of this will be in shadow. So yeah, get. Hey, now we'll get this other other one back here. This one here is uh, pretty much in shadow all the way along, so it's just going to be a darker area. But I'll start out by putting the blue down. And then when I put the shadow pattern in, it'll be uh, a lot darker. But we'll get a base coat started here. So I'm using the blue, I'm using the blue uh, combination here to uh, put the first layer of color down on the painting and we'll back over here I got another another support here on the stool on the uh, actually the bench the uh, little seat little bench I'll put some color there maybe a little blue and then I'll pick a little bit of I'll pick up a little more of that burnt sienna here around this edge here also. Give it a little more color change. And one more, one more back here. Uh, a little support for the, uh, for the seat here. I've used this uh, table here, uh, I've used it uh, several times when I go plain air and there's uh, uh, back in the woods there and I can sit at this little bench here and do, do, do I can draw, I can sketch, I've done small paintings, so I've done, done quite a bit of plain air, plain air painting off of this table and I'll give a little more, a little more, just a touch of brown here, a little more burnt sand right there at the edge and I've got to get this, uh, oh, put this color in here this will be in shadow, so it can be a little bit darker. Okay, all right. Well, I've got the uh, I got that's this that's going to be my center of interest. Now, also, what I'm going to do is while I'm here with the blue, I'm going to go ahead and put the background in. Also, uh, I'm going to use uh, use the blue combination, and what I'm going to do here is take a little more of the cerulean blue now. Uh, a little lighter color, but I'm going to go ahead and put in the sky and a little bit of the, the water in the background. So it's just a very, very simple, basic background. Uh, not a lot of detail back here at all. I don't want a lot of detail in the background. And that, that's my preference, is not to uh, not to have this show too much in the painting. I just, it's just a backdrop. But this is more of a combination of the, the water and the uh, and the sun, or the sky in the background. There's a couple of trees here I'm going to paint in after I get the sky done or after I get down to that point. Okay, then I'm going to pick up this uh, small brush. I think I'll use, I think I'll use the uh, half inch brush. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of green number one. A little bit of green number one. I'm going to put in some greenery here. There's some bushes here on the bottom. so. I'm going to go ahead and put in some, some green touches here. That'll make the background a little more interesting than just blue. So there was some, there were some trees and bushes back here in the background. Uh, and just, just a hint, just a hint of the touch, just a hint of the touch. Okay, now I'm going to continue on now with the uh, the background color. I'm going to put in uh, some more blue. So 
So this is just the again uh, this is simulating the background is the sky the sky blue and a little bit of the blue blue water in the background. It's just this combination to simplify the the background. Let's go over that green a little bit. Just to, what I'm doing is blending that in together, the green and the blue. There's no detail. I don't want any detail in the background. Simplify the background. That way, all of your interest and all all your attention will go into the impact area, which is uh, going to be the table. Now I'll pick up a little more of that green, and I'll put that little more green on this side. Of the tree, there's some bushes here, some low, uh, some low, little low grass, and little low bushes here on the on the bottom of this uh, portion here. Then I'll put some grass uh, right next to this tree. I'll put some a little bit of greenery up here. Now just just to uh, simulate that there are some trees and vegetation there in the background. That's all it is. Okay. Okay, I got two more areas here. I'm going to turn the painting around now and paint these other areas in very quickly. This one's go in. So, more background using the cerulean blue with a three quarter inch flat brush. And I can put in a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue also. And continue over here. And before it gets dry, I want to go ahead and in introduce that, uh, that green in there. I want to do a little wet on wet here. So while the paint's still wet, I'll uh, add in some of that uh, green, green number one, and that, uh, that way it'll blend in very, uh, very lightly. And it'll dry a lot lighter when it's, when it's dry. Watercolor dries about uh, 30 30 percent lighter when it dries. It looks it looks dark when you put it down, but when it dries, it gets much lighter. That's because the water the water content makes it look uh, darker when it's wet. It's like the wet ground after it be when it's raining, the ground looks wet. It looks darker because of the water or wetness, and then when it dries out, uh, it gets it looks dry. So the watercolor does the same thing. The shine of the water on the and the watercolor makes it look darker, but then when the shine the shine goes away, it dulls down. So that's the characteristic of a watercolor of a watercolor painting. But you have to compensate for that. You have to say, well, how dark do I want to have it? Well, you either got to put another layer on it later to darken it, or you you uh, plan ahead to put a, a little layer, a little darker layer down when you paint it. And so I'm not going to go back and touch this anymore. Once it's, once it's dry, that's going to be it. Okay, now we'll turn it around. Okay, a simple background uh, of the blue and uh, a little bit of greenery. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and mix up some... Uh, now I'm going to mix up quite a combination of colors here now. Not a combination, but the uh, complementary color of the blue is going to be the orange. So I'm going to use uh, uh, start out with my orange. This is a permanent yellow orange is what I'm using here. That's what it's called, yellow orange. And then uh, put a little bit of, a, maybe just a touch of uh, lemon yellow. And then I'm gonna go into the uh, ultramarine, uh, go into the yellow ochre, a little bit of yellow ochre. And then uh, finally uh, into the burnt sienna. Those are, that's the orange color. So that's the oranges that I'm gonna use against the uh, against the uh, the blue. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in now. So I think what I'll do is uh, I'm going to use a I'm going to use a hockey brush just to wet it. I want to dampen it down, do a little wet on wet to get to cover the paper much faster. So I'm going to uh, wet the brush in the clean bucket. And uh, the hockey brush holds a lot of water, so I can cover this very quickly. This is a natural hair brush. Uh, this is a silver brush uh, product. Uh, it's also on my website. This is the large hockey. It's about two and a half inches wide. 
and it, it holds a lot of water. I use this a lot of my paintings. If you've seen some other paintings before, you've seen me use the hake to cover a large area, do a, a large backgrounds, uh, get the get the paper wet. Uh, the wet paper, wet on wet, makes the uh, makes the paint flow a lot faster and a lot smoother, and uh, it'll cover much easier with a, with a wet wet paper. Okay, uh, there, there's some dry spots in there, but that's okay. If it's a dry spot, then that'll give me a little a little texture. So we'll go from there, and I'm going to pick up now. I'm going to pick up the uh, one inch uh, flat now from uh, Holbein. Synthetic and I'm going to start out with uh, I'm going to start out with the orange really watered down here And I'm going to go ahead and start putting in some color And this is the orange the orange it's in the uh, that that grass uh, It wasn't grass what it is. It was, those are pine needles uh, There's a little bit of uh, burnt sienna in with that orange uh, Those were pine needles on the ground that uh, it covered a lot of pine trees there so it's it's amazing it just it covers the whole area if you if you go back and look at that photograph you'll see that there was a lot of a lot of orange color there all from the pine needles and that's a beautiful it's a beautiful color and the, the sun shining on it uh, that's what really attracted my eye was the the, the contrast and, the, and of course when you put the shadow when you put these shadows in there it really gives a nice Effect a nice dramatic effect with the shadows the dark shadows. I got to slow down here now to get behind these uh, supports here on the table Using this big uh, little One inch brush covers a lot of area also I'll go back uh, pick up some more of that orange. I'm gonna get some orange in there now around the The orange will be around the uh, table a little more orange around the table because that's where the blue is That's where the contrast is uh, let me turn this around now just a little bit Get over here bit on the side over here Okay, so I'm working around the edges Up behind the table now and uh, I'll turn it around some more So I can work at the top So with this with this flat brush, I'm, I'm using a very they're very they're straight edges So it's easy to get a, a flat brush in there with the corner of the brush you can see how I can go in there and just go in there and just cover it right up. And just put this orange right next to this blue now. Uh, that'll make that, that's, that'll give it a pop. That contrast of the orange color next to the blue. And the trees are going to have a, they're going to be also a, a brown or an orange, an orange cover. So it'll be a lot of browns and a lot of oranges here in this particular area. A lot, a lot two, over two thirds of the painting now is all going to be uh, the orange colors. There's a little bit of yellow ochre. I'll put that in there. So I mixed up the uh, the paints that I was going to apply. And uh, now I'm putting a little bit of yellow ochre in with that orange. It'll give a little variety. And I've got to work around this ed edge up here now. So I'll use the edge of the brush and uh, around the corner. Use the corner of the brush. So this big, this big old one-inch brush is uh, very easy to use. It, uh, it's these are straight lines, so I'll get it. I can use the corner of the brush very simply. And go in here, and I can pick up a smaller brush. Uh, to get into the tight spots, there's a one half, I'll use the one half inch flat. There'll be the tight spots I can get in here. And uh, put that in. Okay, I'll go back to the bigger brush. Yeah, I'll finish it off now. I'm going to go down here at the bottom and finish off the colors. So using large brush, using large brush strokes with a large brush, uh, very simple to cover the area. So right now I'm just covering the paper uh, with uh, permanent yellow orange, uh, yellow ochre, and uh, burnt sienna.
And you'll see here, I've just about, except for the trees now, I'm going to go back and paint the trees, but just about right now, I've got all the, the, the painting cover. That's a quarter sheet of paper cover. And uh, I'm going to go up here now with uh, some more of that orange. I'll pick up some more orange on the palette. And go up here and get up this section up here at the top using a half inch brush now to get a little more, a uh, little, little tighter spot to get in there. And I'll put some, um, I'll put some, uh, some marks here on the, and I can go in here and kind of uh, close up some of these, make sure I got all the whites that I want to capture. Eliminate the white spots. Okay. Not important now. A little more bench sand over here. Okay. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and paint the trees in. I think uh, the trees, I'm going to use, uh, because they're in the sun, most of them are in the sun, I'm going to use the yellow ochre. Uh, and I'll put the shadow in another color. So I'm going to use yellow ochre now on the trees. So I'm going to go in here and put the, I'm using a one half inch flat brush. And these are big pine trees that I have here. The pine tree, these pine trees have a, an or, have an orange color to them also, orange and brown uh, color. So they, they'll go with the color scheme I have of complementary orange and blue. Because brown brown has a burnt sienna has a, a looks like a dark orange is what it looks like. And this will be a little bit lighter here. The bottom of the tree. So it'll make a slightly different uh, value than the, the ground. It's a little bit lighter there than the ground. Okay, now the yellow, I'm going to put yellow on these other trees. And I'm using the flat brush. See, I dragged that, I dragged that now from uh, on the edge, and I can get a, a nice thin line even with a flat brush. I don't need a round brush to do that. In fact, you ought to, when you own your brushes, when you use them, uh, practice your brush strokes and see how many different ways you can use the brush and you'll be amazed at uh, you know the round brush you can act you can do it use it like a flat by using the side of the brush and here I'm using the uh, flat brush just like a round brush I'm using the edge and the corners that I can get in there and get in the tight spots even with a, even with a flat brush And of course, the, uh, even the size of the flat brush makes a little difference sometimes. Okay. All right. All right. I just about got all the paint covered now. Uh, there's a couple of little areas I want to touch up with the blue, but I can. Uh, let's see. I'll get that. I'll get that later when I get the shadows in there. That's okay. That's fine. Let's see. I might want to put some. Uh, a little bit of a little bit of blue under here. So now, now right now, illuminating some of the uh, the white of the paper. Okay, and up here, uh, there's a little little touch up here behind this. Put a little bit of orange up here by the back of this table. Okay. All right. Now, what I want to do now, I've got the, uh, I've got this. I'm going to leave this a little bit. Now, what I want to do now is I want to uh, put in some texture. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is I, I come up with a, a device here, not a device, but I'm going to use. Uh, uh, I got a, I got a little cup of paint. I mixed in some yellow ochre and burnt sienna, a little bit of orange into this little cup with some water. And what I have here is I have a, I have a calligraphy, a calligraphy nib, a nib from a pen, and I attached it to a paintbrush. 
And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use that and I'm going to drag that across some of these drier areas. Let's see what if it's if it's dry enough yet. Yeah, it's going to work. Yeah. And so what I'm going to do now is get some texture now because the pine needles uh, there's a lot of pine needles, so I'm just going to give a little bit of indication here of some pine needles. So I'm going to give some some cross strokes here, up and down, sideways. But these are like cross crisscross crisscross strokes that I'm going to. These are just indicate the fact that I have some texture on the ground here. This will indicate the the uh, the pine needles that I have on the ground. The rest of it, the shadows won't really show up that much. Uh, there'll be a little bit showing up. And what I can do also, I can take the and take the rigger brush, and I take some uh, take some of the burnt sienna, which is a darker brown or darker orange, what you want to call it, and uh, and I can start putting some marks in here with it with a rigger brush also. You can see here it's still a little bit wet, so what I'm going to do might want to take it down a little bit. Go back to that. Go back to the other mark. I'm scraping into the paper now. So putting a little, something a little texture, little marks. The paint, uh, the the painting is still a little bit wet, but it's okay. I just want. I'm just going to get some marks down here, indicating, the aiding, uh, just indicating that these are these are pine needles and they're crisscross stroke. So I found out that this this uh, this pen uh, with I can put the I can put the uh, what I do with a pen I dip it in just like a dip pen it's like a dip pen I fill it up with with the watercolor paint and I can use that to draw with and I can make these marks uh, lines uh, simulating uh, pine needles. Uh, it's just like using a dip pen in, uh, in black and white. Dip it into a pink ink well. So I decided this is, I've never tried this before. It's my first experiment of using a watercolor with a dip pen. And uh, the nib makes a big difference. This, this is really a calligraphy nib, calligraphy, calligraphy uh, pen nib that I'm using. It's a little broader. And that makes the marks a little a little wider. So the size of the nib would make a difference also, depending on what kind of marks you're going to make. And what I think I'll do now is, is up around the uh, impact area. Now I'm going to put a little more definition. I'm going to put some some of these marks. Uh, these will show up. around the impact area, which is the this table and bench. Okay, I think I'm going to put the blow, I took the dryer on just for a, a minute and let it dry down, dry it down a little bit. So I'm going to put the dryer on and dry it up just a little bit. So what we're doing now, we're adding a little texture to the uh, the ground, simulating those uh, pine needles that are there. And you can put as many of those as you want to simulate that. Uh, I mean, I just put them in some of the uh, prominent areas. A little bit dry up the, and I can pick up a little bit of the excess moisture.
Okay, all right. I just want to dry it down. So now, what I want to do now is start putting in the shadow patterns, and I can go back and add more texture if I think I need it. So uh, that'll be the last thing I have to worry about is the texture. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and put in the shadow patterns. I think I'll start in the background with the, the trees. Uh, I'm going to mix up. A, I'll get this uh, little little cup out of the way. So I'm going to mix up. I got the burnt sienna here. I'm going to just a touch of ultramarine blue to give me a darker brown. And I'm going to put that over here. Uh, the, the sun was coming from left to right, so this would be the shadow side of the tree over here. So the shadow would be back here on this on this tree. This big old pine tree right here. So the shadow, you can really see the shadow really makes the rest of the colors uh, look brighter when you put a darker value. On top of a lighter value, it makes it, it makes the lighter value really show up. Okay. And then what I want to do is take a take the flat brush with just plain water in it, and I'm going to smooth the side out just a little bit, just smooth this edge out because I, I I want a graded edge. I don't want a oh, I don't want a hard edge. It's a graded. It's a round. The tree is round, so I'll make it look a little rounder over there. That's, that's better. Okay. And then I think I'll take that same, uh, uh, I'll, I'll use the rigger now, the rigger brush. This is another Holbein rigger number four. And I'm going to use that as a uh, texture on the tree. I'm just going to put the, this is the bark, the bark on the tree. So I'll make a little, couple little marks here on this tree. Okay, just give it a little roughness. Okay, then I go and do the other one. So I'll use the. Uh, Use a smaller brush now. Okay, and I want to get the little shadow pattern going over here on this tree on the outside. And the shadow pattern on this tree. And then uh, what I want to do is uh, I'll use a smaller brush now, wet, just a wet on wet, and this will I want to smooth out. This will be a I want a blended edge, a blended edge here uh, because it's right, the, the tree is round. I don't want to have a hard edge. Okay, that's good enough. All right, uh, this needs to be a little bit darker over here. The shadow's a little darker on this tree over here. I'm going to put just another another layer of color on the on this tree bark shadow there okay I'll let that dry out okay now under the uh, on the table itself let's see uh, this one here I'm gonna need a darker color and what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna take the I'm gonna now the shadow color now I'm gonna use the blue uh, ultramarine I'm gonna touch I'm gonna add a little bit of we're not going to inviolate it now because it's going to, I'm going to put a little warmer color into that shadow because I got reflection off of the and a little bit of the burnt sienna. A little bit of burnt sienna in with that ultramarine blue and a little blue, bluish purple. So that's going to be my shadow pattern underneath the, underneath the table. So this this uh, this support here on the back on this back part of the table is going to be all all in shadow. So that'll that'll have the, the full color of the ultramarine uh, blue with in in with the cornucopium violet to give it a dark shadow color. So by putting the purple and uh, putting the purple violet in with the blue, it'll darken it up, but also gives it a warmer warmer color. And I, I would a touch of 
burnt sienna in there to give it the warmth of the the same colors on the ground. Okay, let that dry a little bit. Now this one up here, I'm going to start out now. This one is uh, has a shadow pattern, but it's also got a interesting little edge to it. It's not it's not completely in shadow, so it's got a little edge to it, which I'm going to leave open to show the shine, to show the sunshine on it. And it's going to be dark, dark shadow, part shaded down. Okay, now I'm going to take the, uh, the round brush and soften up that edge here because this is also a rounded surface. This one was partially in, the uh, sun was partially hitting this particular support here. Might bring that shadow on down just a little bit more over here. It's a little bit lighter, it's not as, light, not as dark as the back one. The back support, it's a little bit, a little bit lighter. Okay, <clears throat> then I have a, I have a back, I have a back support here on this, on this, on the seat, and it's in shadow, partially, I got a slight, part of it still is, is a little bit, of, a little bit of sunlight popping out against that, so I'm going to leave a little edge of that showing. Little nice contrast against that forward leg, okay? So a little light, a little light and dark action going on here. So this is going to come out, and make this soft here, a soft edge, because it's rounded. Okay. And then uh, this front, this front one now is just about. This is about half and half. So I've got. This part's dark back here. And then the sunlight's coming. So I can make this round. Okay. Okay. Now I got to work on the edges now. Um, so I'm going to darken this up. There'll be a lot of darker value here. So this edge, this edge of the table is in shadow. So this is going to go all the way back. Dark. This edge of the table is in shadow. Then you'll start seeing the dimension of the of the table showing up. Details always add always add the final touches that uh, gives the definition of the object. And then this forward edge is also in, in, there's a shadow. The tree is casting a shadow. This is a cast shadow. So we have cast shadows here on the on the on the table top. And then we'll have. The shadows on the ground from the actual uh, shadow pattern. They're all cast shadow, but this has to be a cast shadow up here on the table. And it goes across, what I'm going to do here now, this, this goes across the top of this. The shadow goes across the top of this table 
and it leaves a little light area, which is very makes it a very interesting design part that I wanted to make sure I had. And then the back, this cast shadow also is in the back here. So very interesting. The, first, the photograph that I had used for reference also shows the same shadow pattern, which I thought was very interesting. Okay. And then the, uh, the seat also has a shadow across it. Uh, this edge is dark. It's in shadow. So that'll give this definition to the to the bench crossed here in shadow. This edge is in shadow. And then it was a cast shadow across the top. And we'll make that darker. I'm using the blue, blue mixed in with the, the violet. Quinacum violet mixed in with the, 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 the violet gives it a nice, uh, war it gives a little warmth to the blue. The blue is too cool, but the, the violet gives it a nice uh, warmth touch to the shadow. I'm going to go across there. Yeah, just about right there. that shadow pattern there is from the from the tree once I get the ground once I get the ground shadows in that'll start making a little more sense okay there's a shadow cast shadows on the on the on the bench itself okay now I'll start working I'll get a bigger brush now I'll start working on the shadows on the ground and uh, we'll just about cl close this puppy up let's see so I'm going to use the same colors, uh, except I'm going to use a little more, because of the orange, I'm going to use a little more uh, burnt sienna and quinacridone violet, and a touch of that ultramarine blue. It gives, it's, got to have a, it's got to be a cool color, so the ultramarine blue gives me the cool color, and the burnt sienna gives me the warm, and I got the, this kind of the middle middle thing, middle color is the... Uh, uh, we're not going violet. So there's this cast shadow here from this tree here. And I've got to bring that up a little bit. Okay. There's a cast shadow here behind. Now these cast shadows are from all these trees. It was, you don't see them in the painting, but they're there. And the photograph shows the shadows. Uh, these are the shadows cast by the trees uh, off, off by the waterfront. So you can see, I'll need a smaller brush for this one. Uh, going behind here. So the shadow, the shadow color is uh, uh, the only secret to a shadow is to get the colors that are, that are on the ground. The ground here is orange from the from the pine needles, but because of the shadow, because the shadow is is cooler than the sunlight, then we have to cool down the we have to cool down the brown orange color by using a little bit of blue mixed in with the orange and then by and then adding a little bit of violet to it to give a little more warmth also so it's a combination of those colors but really you can see it still see the brown the brownish orange color underneath that's that's the key to a shadow is it's a little darker value than the than the actual ground value and it's also got a touch of blue in it so I got the darker value by adding a little bit of violet to the Burnt sienna, that made it darker, 
And then I add a little touch of ultramarine blue to cool it down. And that's that's the secret. Uh, uh, that's the secret color combination for a shadow. So now I'm putting in these uh, shadow patterns for the trees that are out here on the side, uh, off the edge of the painting here. But they're casting shadows on the ground and then across this uh, table top. Let's see. As soon as I get away from as soon as I get away from this table, I can put the other shadows are going a little bit faster. Okay, that's the first one right across the tabletop. Okay, <clears throat> then I've got another shadow, larger shadow right here. Comes across the bottom to the bottom bottom edge of the table support. And that goes on across. So that uh, ultramarine blue mixed in with that burnt sienna gives me that cool. Then I add a little touch of ultramarine violet to bring in a little warmth. And that's where I get that shadow color. Because the violet has <clears throat> blue and has orange, has red in it. <clears throat> okay, now we have <clears throat> one more shadow at the bottom. Mix up a little more paint. <clears throat> Burn Sienna, Ultramarine Blue, and a touch of Malcolm Violet. And I use a large, I'm using a large one inch flat brush to apply. Okay, <clears throat> now the only thing that would be a little more interest to it, uh, depending how much time you want to put on the painting, how much time you, you want to use on the time, is we can go in and we make little, we can make little marks down here. I'm using a, using a rigger, a number four rigger, and I'm adding in some small brush strokes to simulate the uh, pine needles. And I'll use a little bit more, a little more burnt sienna with the, gives it a brown flavor. And mix a little bit of orange into that, give it a little bit of orange flavor. So using the, using the uh, rigor brush to give me a nice long stroke. And I'm also, I'm also going over the, over the, uh, uh, shadow patterns a little bit that'll, that'll bring it in together. Using a crisscross stroke with the uh, with a rigor brush.
Yeah, I'm going to finish off up here just putting a, <clears throat> a few uh, up here in the top just to have unity. Don't want to have one area isolated uh, off by itself, but kind of bring it in uh, so the unity factor is the, the marks here up the top. And the ones that are far away are were not as well defined. They'll be smaller, lighter, less detail. I got one more. I got one more shadow pattern I missed up here. I missed this pattern. I missed this shadow pattern right here. Shadow pattern from this tree. And there's another shadow over here on this one. Okay. All right. Okay, let's put a mat around that. I'm going to take a look at the mat, and I'm going to let's see. Oh, uh, got the shadow pattern. Do do do. Okay. Shadow pattern. I'm going to use a blue. Uh, I use a blue mat to put around it. Ha! <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, that blue, that blue on the on the table, I think, is what was a good choice because that really brings the blue blue out with a with a blue mat. And then the orange, of course, is the contrasting color of that blue, and that's the that's the color plan of the actual sketch. And you see, two thirds of the painting is all per. You don't want to have equal amount so there you know, a minimum of blue and a maximum of the uh, orange and there's also blue complementary back here in the in the background with a little bit of water and sky uh, combination back there okay now I did this I did this previously also as a practice let me show you that one I did I had a little more time to work on that one I put a little more definition in some of the areas uh, those are the one I did earlier you see, I did a little more a little more uh, texture work in the ground, and I used uh, what I did. I used that pen. I used that calligraphy pen and went in and did more marks on the ground. Okay, that's about all. Basically, everything else is the same. Okay, so let's go back to my main camera. Hey, <laughs> all right. It was another fun day with shadows, and uh, the. Uh, the plan today was to uh, do a, a, sh a shadow pattern, and I used the, I used the contrasting colors of, of blue and orange to bring that out, and I think it's worked out very effectively. Uh, very effective painting, very simple painting, a uh, simple subject, but also a dramatic contrast when you use different colors like orange and blue, and then you put a nice dark shadow around it. So I think it turned out to be a very successful operation. I hope you enjoyed that. and. Uh, the color combinations for making shadows, I think I went through that. I think it's a very important deal right there. Uh, using a complementary color for the shadows, but also to darken it with a little bit of blue in it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be later. I'll be on uh, next week at uh, 2 o'clock for another uh, painting demonstration at 2, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here. And then this evening, I'll be uh, Everett's, uh, uh, simply drawing with Everett at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you want to join me there, uh, uh, you're welcome. So until then, you all have a safe week, and uh, we're getting close to Christmas. I know, everybody's busy. So you all have a safe week, and uh, I'll see you next week, either, either 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the watercolors, or 7.30 evening p.m. Uh, with my drawing class. Hey, we'll see you then. Bye.